How many times have you watched a video on TV, YouTube, or even our channel where someone teaches you how to plant a food plot? It's been done over and over again. And it's one of those situations where you as the viewer have to decide whether or not that specific tactic will work on your place. The way I see it is every location kind of has its own story, its own personality, and you're the one that has to try to figure out exactly what it's telling you. And I think one of the most overlooked pieces of a food plot is how to hunt it effectively. Entry and exit routes, stand locations for certain situations, when to harvest specific deer, and just knowing where the deer want to be at certain times of the year. These are things that I think about on a daily basis. It's micromanagement at its finest, but in the end, it pays off. We're in the same food plot where my mother-in-law, Judy, killed her deer last year. And he was actually standing right there. We were hunting in the redneck blind, but I've kind of changed the architecture of the food plot a little bit. Um, you know, I changed it up a lot from last year. Last year was really the first year that we planted all this to food. And it's kind of changed how the deer are moving. And we, had, we put the redneck blind up and it worked out great. But when we got into later season, I noticed some things that I wanted to change a little bit. So we put in about an acre of corn. It's about 200 yards long and 24 yards wide. I wanted the corn for a vertical cover to make the deer feel a little bit safe because we've got a road about a half mile out there. It's gonna help me walk in. It's gonna pinch the deer down a little bit. And then we've got an acre of soybeans. And then I planted this strip of soybeans in front of the redneck blind, mainly because last year when we were hunting it, you had, we'd have deer come by the redneck and we couldn't see them out of the windows because they were so close. So I planted a couple widths of the planter to keep them 15 yards away from the blind. Now later season, they'll be in there you know, feeding on those, but it's just more of a, it's more of a soft edge to kind of keep the deer away because most of the deer come from, from that direction. So we hunt this stand with anything east wind. A lot of times you don't have an east wind. I need to figure out a way that we can hunt this food plot on some type of a west wind. So you never had a you never had a tree stand on this on this food plot no. forever. And that's and that's no. kind of what we're doing today is is you're taking going different from a box blind where you had only one one option. Now we're putting yep. up a tree stand where you can uh, yep. get get a whole different scenario. Yeah, and, and it, it's just kind of a tough area because we're on the very west end of the farm. That is our property line, and it's just a big ag field out there. Yeah. So we're we're trying to just add to the habitat out. If you notice, the food plot's really weedy, and it's good and bad. We're not trying to grow a crop. We're trying to grow a food plot for the deer, but I think those weeds are going to add a little bit of yeah. the vertical cover that we need as well to make, them, to make them feel safe out here where normally they weren't spending any kind of time. You know, trying to add to the huntability of it and get some, some type of a west wind stand, we're gonna put it down at the south end of the plot. Our wind's gonna be blowing right back to the house. And early season, it may be more of an observation type stand. You know, we might be sitting over there. The Wishing first... you were sitting over here? Yes, yes, but it's, it's still an opportunity <laughs> yeah, to yeah. get out and do a little recon. Yeah. And we can slip out without deer knowing we're, we're even in the world. So, you know, first couple weeks of October, we may be sitting back there and we may be seeing a deer here, yeah. but we can't hunt here unless we have that east type wind and that doesn't happen very often so I think the stand that we're about to hang is going to be a dynamite late season spot mid-December on into that January time frame we get cold we get snow a lot of these deer are going to be coming to this area because we've just got so much food what you explained about your knowledge of how they congregate on that little hillside yes before they head out through that gap into the big field when we were filming last year late season I had like 30 six or 37 deer in the plot, 19 of them were bucks, and they all congregated in a just a 20 yard spot at that end of the field. And it just so happens it was within 30 or 40 yards where I want to hang the stand. So just learning from hunting last year and, and getting, the, getting the hang of things. So Yeah, and the, the cool thing about that is you drive by that tree a thousand times and not think twice about it. Yeah. But just being aware of your surroundings and mm -hmm. learning from past movement, that's, that's cool. Yep. You, you know, it's just a an ad adaptation to what you've seen.
for doing that today, but it's November 13th. Me and Dallas are hunting together. He's filming using his crossbow. That's the first year I've ever killed with a crossbow on video, so no better time to take a doe than the lockdown, so it's early. I waited till she got past us, and I was expecting her to run that way, but she ran straight out across into that other field, but she died right out there, and now I can wait for maybe a big deer to show up. You don't know, but there was no other deer in the field other than her two fawns, so. Another deer just stepped out. Did it. Good. Now I can make up some elaborate story on how we had this deer pattern. We knew he was coming to the food plot, but that's just not the story. Um, second gun season rolls around. I call my father-in-law. He's actually feeding cows at the time, and I said, hey, let's go deer hunting this afternoon. Neither one of us had taken a scent-free shower. We didn't have, you know, hardly any camouflage on. We both had blue jeans on, but we went to the redneck blind. We had the right wind, but we really had no idea what was going to show up. I've got his shit antler at the house. You do? Yeah. <clears throat> I filmed Jesse pass him up right here last year, late season. So we just decided to sit there to maybe wait for another buck or a doe, you know, whatever comes out, Jim's ready to go. And it wasn't two minutes later, big doe steps out and Jim's eyes lit up. You want to talk about one heck of an afternoon. Um, I killed my buck, Jim kills his doe, we make a nice recovery, but in in the process of recovering our deer, my brother had called me, he killed an eight and a half year old deer that we'd been trying to kill on a different farm. So we had an absolute mess on our hands. We had deer everywhere, we had to get everything 
you know, back to the house. And at that point, video kind of becomes secondary. We, you know, we start taking pictures. We've got the whole family there. It's just a heck of a nice feeling to to watch plans come together, but at the same time, just go hunting with your family and have a good time.